thought it would be energizing to, uh, by the way, this webinar is being recorded, um, just so everybody knows. Um, I just thought it would be energizing to hear what is good, what good is happening in our community. And I, just give it, give it, a, give it a second. Maybe it may take take a you know a minute or two to to just think of that. But um, man, there's this quote Mr. Rogers had, and it was something along the lines of something to the tune of you know when whenever there's a crisis, you want to look for the helpers, right? Always look for the helpers, right? And um, I know that there are helpers all over our community right now. And so I just thought, um, whether it be a big thing, I'll share a big thing, um, but, um, or a little thing, you know, something that whether, you know, maybe it's a neighbor helping another person go get groceries or um, hosting a family, you know, that who lost their home or whatever. So I'll, I'll start off. Um, I heard this today. This is, this is like insane. So I have a friend um, in Blue River who lost his home um, to a fire. Um, the way it goes is you get evacuated, you're not quite sure what's going on, you're disoriented, there's no, you're kind of like, just a little bit, you're not sure if you're actually gonna lose your house, well then you do. Um, and so this, this gentleman, he's a pastor of a church and um, lost his home, lost their church. And in two weeks, um, people from around the community uh, gathered almost a hundred thousand dollars. Um, this is a little church of like 35 people. <laughs> so, wow. you know, it's not like a big community thing, but I just heard that news today. I was like, dude, that's like a great, that's a great kind of community movement right there. You know, when you hear about people helping each other and um, so that's just, yeah, there's just little, there's whether, whether it be that or people, you know, my mom giving up, you know, her, uh, her master bedroom in her house for a family. Um, in Oregon City, she lived in Oregon City, and um, but yeah, just the little little stories like that that really kind of help purvey hope in this season. Does anybody have anything? Uh, like I said, it doesn't need to be anything like big and dramatic. It can just be something super small. Um, maybe let's hear just maybe two or three stories. By the way, for the folks in attendance, if you would like to share, uh, you can use the raise hand feature on Zoom and we'll uh, unmute you so that you can um, share your story if you have one. Can I just, start with Sharon. Can I do a point of order? Um, did you happen to see, Elliot, my email? Um, and yes. I, I apologize. I had to hop off because I had technical difficulty. So somebody is um, being recorder for this meeting? Yes, yes, Sean is recording today. Thank you, Sean. Yep. Thanks, Sharon. Story of something good that you've, you've seen happen in the last week. I'll go. Yeah, Shauna. Um, so I saw that um, mountainside was um, gathering donations and doing a barbecue for um, people that were displaced um, from the, the uh, Bald Mountain, Chehala Mountain fire. Um, and I saw at one point they, they put out something saying, thank you everybody, we have more donations than we could use. Like in the yeah. matter of a few hours, people were just showing up with, with, with tons of stuff. And then they said anything that they gathered, you know, that they didn't use, they would, pass on to the next service and I thought wow that's just you know like it was just a Facebook post saying hey we need some help wow. and, and it just came pouring out it's incredible wow I uh, read an article in the Oregonian on Sunday night about community members in Scotts Mills Oregon um, they came together to protect, they, it's a tiny town of uh, just over 300 people, and they came together to help the firefighters protect their town and their homes. And the, the article said um, that for every firefighter, uh, there were at least five community members digging fire wow. lines and bringing in supplies and felling trees. So, um, and as a result of that, they were able to, to save a lot of homes and lives. They wow. did an especially good job because, so Silverton's in one little river valley and Scott's Mills is 
two valleys to the north of it. My father's home is in the river valley in between the two of them. And so the firefighters were able to focus on Silver Falls and stopping the progression down the valley towards um, Silverton and my father's valley because they had that extra help up north with wow. it was it was pretty amazing to see them out there. Wow, yeah. I think we'll be hearing a lot more stories like that, you know, and you know, when you're faced with devastation, you know, a lot it's it's so easy to just kinda just stay in your little cave and, you know, feel sorry for what's going on. But I just I've seen so many people step up, you know. Um, our community, yeah, our community that another uh, group of people are uh, passing out. There's a, this, this uh, organization called Convoy of Hope coming through. Um, this is in Tualatin and this, this Saturday uh, enough, I heard they, they, got it, they have enough uh, groceries right now to feed 500 families. And that's just, they're just gonna be passing food out. People are gonna be lining up and just tons of people volunteering. So that's even in our neck of the woods. Um, it's really inspiring. Any other stories? Big or little things? Some, what else is good happening around here? It can be about the fires or the big, you know, topics or even just something small, um, something ordinary. And for those who just joined us, we've actually got a few more attendees now. I just want to mention that if you would like to share, uh, just use the raise hand feature on mm -hmm. Zoom and we'll uh, un unmute your mic so that you can um, share whatever it is that you would like with the group. Sharon, were you about to say something before I jumped in? I was going to say something on a different, um, completely different level. Um, the Aloha Food Bank <clears throat> has um, one of our artists from the Valley, uh, or sorry, Village Gallery, where I'm on the board. Um, we're doing an art share program. And so people who have artwork that they just want to donate to a family who's coming in for food um, will get a piece of art of their choosing. So when they, uh, and this one, person had started this program, had called the gallery, I put her in touch with her board, and we are now launching this whole program now. So, um, and we have people coming forward and, and donating wow. artwork. So that's complete, great. Completely different tack. Yeah, that's, that's great. I think that's just, that's delightful and very, just it's powerful. Um, great, well, thanks for, the energizing stories just i love starting meetings just with what's good even even through the thick of it sometimes and um you know there's plenty there's plenty to talk about but it's just i think it's energizing to just hear some of the good stories um so yeah um, my name's elliot Audison. i'm the chairman of neighbors southwest i'm running this meeting today um we're actually in partnership with the sexton mountain um we're kind of like two neighborhoods um, in one meeting. And so um, we have myself and then everybody else here is with, with Sex and Mountain, but we're going to run just kind of a, a classic neighborhood meeting today. Um, um, starting with a re few reports. So is, offer, if, uh, is Officer Fleckenstein on for a report? He is not on. He must be busy um, okay. doing police stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's. Uh, We'll kind of shelf that his report and and uh, unless he can come on a little later we'll go to um mark hawken hawken how do you how do you say your last name uh hawken hawken mark hawken the report of tualatin and hills parks rec okay well thank you um i'm the mark hawken uh the risk manager for tualatin hills park and work district um it was kind of exciting after months of uh, delays uh, due to COVID. We were able to open up our facilities uh, the, the end of August, beginning of September. Uh, but unfortunately, currently due to the air qualities, uh, all our buildings, parks, trails, and natural areas are closed. Uh, and right now we are monitoring obviously the air quality 
and we are posting updates daily uh, on social media and our website. Uh, currently, we are closed through tomorrow, and I believe sometime this evening they'll make an announcement as to whether or not we go through on to the next day. Um, the items that we did open up, um, so hopefully once the air quality gets better, uh, everybody can start participating in the free fitness in the parks programs. Um, there are a variety of family friendly opportunities, fitness levels for all. Uh, there is no pre-registration required, but you will need to bring a mask and follow physical distancing rules of six feet. Uh, and these classes are planned to run all the way through the end of October. Uh, I just need to check our website for uh, the dates and locations. Um, we did reopen Conestoga Recreation Aquatic Center, uh, the Twalton Hills Athletic Center, and this week we uh, had planned to open up the uh, tennis center. Um, <laughs> did I hear a yay? That's me. I, I'm, a, I'm an avid tennis player. <laughs> okay. So uh, to access the facilities, um, all you're going to need to do is make reservations. Uh, so you either reserve the, uh, a time frame for your weight room, your fitness class, the courts uh, that you may be using, whether it's uh, in the gym or on the tennis courts. Um, the process, unfortunately, is necessary due to the compliance that we have to follow for um, physical distancing, contact tracing, and class size or facility limits. And uh, the various hours are posted on the website as well as the uh, portal in order to make those reservations. Uh, currently, you can reserve, I believe it's a week, a week and a half in advance. Uh, and that is a rolling reservation system. Um, some other things that uh, we're supposed to get started this week as well uh, but will be rescheduled is a talking wall project. Uh, this is a way to express uh, the district's commitment to racial justice. Uh, the Park District is pa uh, partnering with the Black Student Union from Sunset High School and uh, a group called Color Outside the Lines. And uh, they were supposed to meet this past Saturday uh, to help uh, design and create murals that are going to be painted at uh, sunset. Um, this week as well, uh, we were expanding out of school care options for families. Uh, so that way parents uh, can move into the school year uh, a little bit easier. Uh, so we're going to provide some uh, reliable, consistent place for children to learn and participate in a safe and socially enriched activities. Uh, again, families can sign up online. Um, currently, we're gonna be running those programs at Cedar Hills Rec Center, Conestoga Rec Center, and there are a number of uh, identified elementary schools uh, that we're working with Beaverton School District on. Uh, so more information, again, can be found at the um, website. And then lastly, I kind of mentioned at the last meeting uh, that uh, because of the community psyche grant that we received from Washington County, uh, we are in the process of trying to reimagine some community events uh, that we can bring in a safe manner. Um, so hopefully more information will come out on that in the future, but we're looking at drive-in movies, a drive-through Halloween event, uh, since Halloween will obviously be a little different this year. Some little neighborhood concerts, some pop-up events in various neighborhoods, as well as some walking events. So that's basically my report. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer. Anything in the comments there, Francisca? All right. Nope. Um, but just to reiterate for folks, in addition to the raise hand feature, you are welcome to use the Q&A function or the chat function if you have a comment or question for, for anyone present tonight. Yeah. So I'm curious, yeah. how, many, how many staff has THPRD been able to rehire back? Oh, too much. <laughs> hey, Mark, you're muted. 
Sorry. Um, I don't know that answer offhand. Um, as far as full-time employees, the, those that we had retained uh, and were on furlough, uh, that has remained the same since July, I believe. Uh, all we have been doing is hiring additional uh, part-time employees to fulfill the uh, expanded program. So, uh, and we're sitting at about 150 employees on that end, uh, just us part-time. So we're probably at around 300 now. Uh, and at the beginning or at, of COVID when we had to do our um, layoffs and things, I think we were at about two, two and a quarter. So. Uh, far, from our, far from our thousand that we normally have at this time of the year. Right. There is a question from the audience uh, regarding um, the pool opening date. Is that still unknown? Well, uh, the plan was the pools would open, I believe it was October 28th, or not October, excuse me, September 28th. Uh, I don't believe that has been officially announced, um, but they are in the process of trying to reopen the pools end of this month, 1st of October. And uh, so that, that will be forthcoming, but I think we got sidetracked with all the air quality issues at this point. Any other questions? All right, let's go to Francisca with uh, city updates. Great, thanks Elliot. My name is Francisca Rose. I'm the public involvement coordinator with the city of Beaverton. And I just have a few updates from the city. So uh, the city has hired an outside racial equity consultant to support the development of listening and dialogue sessions between the community and city focused on policing and public safety. To kick off this process, a series of four 90 minute conversations for community organizations to participate um, were held. Uh, the first of which occurred in August. Uh, related to this, the, in June, the City Council passed a resolution denouncing systemic racism and committed to eliminate racism in city structures and practices to work toward the elimination of institutional racism in our community and improve the lived experiences of all people of color. Uh, during the summer, Council held four work sessions to better understand current police policies and practices. Outcomes are expected to include the development of a framework to move forward in understanding the city's role in residents' experiences around policing, public safety, health, race, and accountability, as well as research and proposed changes to city policies that would address systemic racism. The consultant held a series of meetings with invited individuals and community groups without city staff or officials present to better understand it needs, background, and desired outcomes. Visit beavertonoregon.gov forward slash be heard for more on these conversations as well as updates as they become available. And I'll put that, uh, that link in the chat here momentarily. Thank you. Uh, Beaverton is currently underway in celebrating uh, our sixth year of welcoming week um, that started on September 12th and will go through September 20th under the theme of creating home together. Welcoming Week is an annual series of events bringing together immigrants, refugees, and U.S.-born residents to raise awareness of the benefits of welcoming everyone. This year, the city is proud to partner with eight community organizations through grants to support virtual and in-person opportunities for cultural exchange. Events will include, uh, events include storytelling, music and cultural celebrations, dance and cooking workshops, small business support, and much more. Uh, visit beavertonoregon.gov forward slash welcoming week for a calendar of events and details. And again, I'll put that link in the chat. Um, and lastly, Beaverton's new city charter becomes operational January 1st, 2021 and brings with it changes to the city's structure and form of government. A series of activities to guide implementation is underway, such as preparations for the November 2020 election to fill open elected positions and community engagement to support city manager recruitment. Hiring of an interim city manager to support the transition is being coordinated with support from an outside firm for professional recruitment services and to ensure best practices during the hiring process, such as proceeding with a diversity, equity and inclusion lens. Development of the interim city manager candidate profile is expected to be concluded in September, followed by the job posting. Oh, it, be, it is concluded, sorry. Uh, 
followed by the job posting, interviews, and selection, culminating in an appointment in December with a start date of January 1st, 2021. The appointment of a regular city manager is expected to be completed in the first half of next year after community and staff engagement. And for more information about the city charter, answers to frequently asked questions and latest news, visit beavertonoregon.gov forward slash charter. And those are the updates that I've got for tonight. Does anybody have any questions on anything that I have shared? I'm, so just, I'm just curious, what exactly does a city manager do? Yeah, you know, that is a really great question. Um, so the city manager is basically the CEO of the city. So under our previous form of government, we had a strong mayor form of government, but now we will have a council, city council, city manager form of government. Um, so we will we're recruiting for a professional city manager uh, who uh, through there's a whole body that oversees city managers. It's called the Inter uh, ICMA. Um, and so they, they will have similar duties to what the current mayor has, um, but the form of government, the structure of it will be different in terms of uh, roles and responsibilities. But the, the mayor will be still the official figurehead of the city where the mayor will still stay on board as a full-time mayor, um, but the city manager will be the one uh, running the operations. There's actually a really great infographic um, that, that I helped to develop that actually outlines the, the differing new roles and responsibilities between the, the mayor now under the new city charter, the city manager, and city council. Um, so I'll put that link for the charter website, but definitely go check out the infographic. It's a really easy to digest kind of the, the high level overview of what it now means for, for Beaverton under this new form of government. Sharon. I just want to put a plug in for our uh, voters forum <clears throat> that's coming up. Yes. Yeah, October 14th is a Wednesday. Um, our committee is still going through the process of figuring out how that's going to function exactly. However, most likely virtual, all virtual. Um, and it will be the mayor's runoff or the mayor's race, uh, city council, the new city council position and I think Washington County race as well. So um, be aware that I think that happens before our next NAC meeting. That's why I wanted to bring it up now. Yeah, thank you, Sharon. Um, yeah, so it is going to be fully virtual, um, <coughs> basically uh, the same format as uh, was the Spring Voters Forum, if anybody uh, watched that in May. Um, and yeah, and so those are the three races that will be featured. Um, we're currently coordinating the logistics of that, but it, it will be a very um, important and consequential voters forum for the future of Beaverton with the, with the mayoral race and the new um, city council position. City council, under the new form of government, city council um, expands to seven members, including the mayor as a voting member. He hadn't under the current structure, he isn't a voting member of city council, but he will now be a voting member of city council, plus the addition of the new city council member. Great. Any other questions? All right, thank you, Francisca. And if you have any other questions, if, if, if maybe you feel like you've missed an opportunity, you can always say it uh, right in your, the, our Q&A chat, and we can, we can go back to that. Francisca has been watching that for us. Um, all right, now we're going to transition to our nonprofit roundup. Um, and we have a special guest tonight um, from Family Promise of Beaverton. And I'm not sure I can take a whack at your first name. Could you introduce yourself and um, what it is, how do you pronounce your name and, and what's going on at the uh, Family Promise? Yeah, um, hi, my name is Wednesday Gamfold. I am on the Family case manager at Family Promises Beaverton. Um, my executive director, Jolene Guppa, let me know that she chatted with this group, what she said feels like lifetimes ago. Um, as, as many of us have talked about uh, in, in our different circles, time just feels weird these days. Um, but we have, we look very, we, we look different these days than we did pre-COVID. Um, 
we is there an echo that's happening? I don't know that is that just me? It's only very slight. Okay, sorry, I don't know how to stop it. Um, so pre-COVID, uh, we worked with a number of different organizations in in the in the city, um, primarily churches, um, but it's not a, a religious organization. Um, we just found really great partners in our local churches. Um, we also are partnered with CHPRD and City of Beaverton. Um, and these different locations or different partners would open their doors for a week at a time during different weeks um, during the year uh, to host the families that we had staying with us, we can we were pre-COVID able to serve four families at a time, um, or a max of 14 people. And uh, the churches or THPRG or the city of Beaverton provided meals and volunteers and all of those things um, to help our families um, out during this time where they're experiencing homelessness. Um, so I guess I should have said that it's at the top, we're an organization that helps families in the Beaverton area who are experiencing homelessness. Um, and uh, the intent of the nonprofit is to get folks into housing, into stable housing. Um, and so because of COVID, we have had to adapt. Um, churches closed down. Our volunteers tend to lean, old, lean older. Um, and it just, it was no longer safe or logical to have our families bouncing from place to place um, each week. And so now we have um, we have our families at a stationary place, so they're not moving week to week, um, but we are still working with our partner organizations, churches, and um, again, City of Beaverton and THPRD, they're still providing meals um, and are helping in whatever ways they can uh, to remain involved, whether that's um, dropping masks off or, uh, you know, bringing by donations or helping our families uh, move into their new places when they get into housing, socially distancing and safely, of course. Um, and so the other, we have another part of our program. Um, so we call it our graduate program. When families get into housing, we are able to help them for a year after um, to be there as a support system if you know, life happens or an emergency comes up, uh, which is something that we've certainly seen during COVID. Um, we have actually one graduate family whose year, uh, whose year ended back in December, but we reached back out to them in March um, to check in to see how they were doing and what they needed. Because, of course, we want to make sure that families remain housed um, and and things are difficult, certainly, for folks and so we've been able to help a number of them remain housed during this time um, and to connect them with food banks and boxes and all of those different things. Um, so right now, uh, outside of the fact that our families are also stationary, um, we have expanded our programming, uh, which is fantastic and we're really uh, grateful to be able to have done so um, because certainly the need the need is there um, in a number of different ways and so now we have an emergency shelter um, and that is through a contract with Washington County uh, so now we're able to help families outside of Beaverton um, who are you know diff in different places in the county and put them up in a hotel room for a max of 28 days. Um, and that 28 days can be extended if a family uh, is really close to getting into housing. Um, and so we work with them. I work with the families um, to get them into housing or as far along as we can during those 28 days. Um, and we've actually expanded to serving some adult-only households as well. So previously, it was just the four families that we were able to help at one time. Now, we still have that. We still have what are, we call our rotation program, so four families. We also now have 10 rooms available um, for five family households and five adult-only households. Hmm. Um, and the intent of this is to 
try and reduce the spread of COVID by getting folks who are high risk and who are currently homeless, getting them off of the streets into somewhere that's safe, and of course, to try and get them into stable housing. Um, so we are grateful, again, to be able to be doing that right now. We're certainly keeping really busy, um, and we now have a second case manager, so I still work with our four families plus the five families um, at the hotel, and then we've got another case manager who works with the adult-only household. Um, and the other part of programming that we have expanded is we now have a program called Beaverton Buddies. And this arose out of a number of nonprofits that had to close their doors for a while um, as they adapted to COVID. Um, we saw an uptick in need for things like diapers and food boxes um, and hygienic supplies. And so we, as a program, um, expanded our role in the community to be able to serve those needs. Um, and so we get a lot of referrals through, or pre-summer, we received a lot of referrals from the school district for families, um, again, in need of diapers and uh, all of those sorts of things, um, cleaning supplies, laundry detergent, uh, really basic household items that one were, uh, you know, we saw that shortage of toilet paper for a while and, and those kind of things. Um, and so we were able to, through donations that came in from the community, uh, help, help get families connected to all of those things. And it's still a program that we have going on right now. Uh, it's a little quiet. On, on that end at the moment, and it's because school has been out. Most of our referrals came through there, um, but we've certainly tried to get the word out in the community that it is um, a service that we are offering, not just the folks who are in our shelter program, but um, to, you know, families that are struggling right now. Um, and so the other thing, the other big thing that we are really excited about is that we received a challenge grant of $10,000 uh, if we can raise the first $10,000. Um, and the purpose of this grant is to help pay rent for families in the Beaverton School District who are at risk of losing housing. Um, as, as we know, uh, it is much more cost effective to help keep somebody in housing than it is to try and deal with a problem afterwards. Uh, it also reduces a lot of trauma for the people that go through it. So whenever we can, uh, we do our best to help folks get connected, um, to try and keep them into house in housing. Um, we had this grant, or we had a similar grant last year, um, and uh, are grateful to have this matching grant this year. Um, we are about $4,000 away um, before we can get that program running. So we are working on fundraising. Um, unfortunately, COVID-19 did mean that we had to cancel a number of different fundraisers. So it's it's been a challenge, but we, again, we're adapting, we're working through it, um, doing our best to continue serving the community. Um, and then I guess the other, the last things that I will share, and I'm sorry, I feel like I just like gave a ton of information. Great. Um, Thank you so much. But, but the last, the last few things I'll say um, are that we are collecting cans and bottles, um, which helps with those fundraising efforts. Um, we also have a fundraiser that's coming up end of October, the 23rd to the 24th. Um, and it's called Night Without a Bed. It's uh, basically our annual fundraiser, which is generally the drive-in sleep out, um, which we can't do the way in which we've usually done in the past, um, but we are going to be doing it virtual. Uh, it's always a blast for those who participate in it, um, and it's essentially challenging people to sleep one night in a tent or or this year it'll be challenging them to sleep um, in a tent in their backyard or on the floor in their living room or even in their car in the driveway. Um, and participants will seek pledges from their friends and family and maybe even challenge them to spend a night without a bed. 
uh, it's all for a good cause. It's to raise awareness um, and also to help families that we serve in the community. Um, we will also be running a silent auction during this. And again, I said a lot of information. So uh, we are happy to send uh, any more information uh, your way to get uh, dispersed. Um, we are, of course, looking for donations outside of monetary ones. Um, Diapers, cleaning supplies, laundry pods, household goods, those kind of things. Um, and so thank you for the time to be able to share all of this. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Winsby. Um, so I was thinking, Francisca, maybe you could, um, you know, put into the, the, the chat, just like information on how to, like, Winsby, like, how do we get, how do we partner with you? if people are interested, maybe like a website link or what, what would be the next steps if people are interested in partnering with you? I think you're muted. Possibly. Of course I am. There you go. <laughs> um, I will send forth an email and a phone number. Um, I would say email is the best way to um, get a hold of us regarding all of this um, but we will we will return phone calls as long as someone leaves a voicemail um, and I will link our website um, I don't think our website is as up to date with all of the information I just shared um, but I will definitely put in our contact info. Wow thank and you are there, are there any questions at all or I was just going to say that um, if you want to put that in the chat, just make sure that you click the drop down. I didn't do this the first time and click all panelists and attendees so that all of the attendees can see um, the information as well, the email address and phone number and website. That would be great. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any questions anybody has for Winsby? Sharon? Are you still taking donations directly at Sunset Presbyterian? You're muted, Winsby. You gotta unmute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm like calling, I called in through my phone, so I mute it here and then there and forget to unmute one of them. Oh, that's um, so yes, we are still taking, we are still accepting donations at Sunset. Um, we do ask that folks give us a call or send an email prior to donations just so that we can make sure um, things are collected when somebody is there. Perfect. Great. Thank you so much, Winsby. And uh, I just, I think it's so great that you're doing what you're doing. I, I've never been homeless, but I have a lot of friends that have gone homeless and I agree with you. It is, it's way better if you can keep, keep a roof, keep, you know, over their heads and instead of letting them get out on the streets, it just gets so much more complicated. And you guys sound like you're doing a great job of doing that, helping people in their critical moment. So yeah, thanks so much. All right, um, we're gonna get into some NAC business now. Um, so Elliot? Yes, Jen. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think that I was gonna do a little mini presentation on oh, another. That's right, yes. <laughs> that's okay, that's okay. And I'll, ma I'll make this quick. So, um, and in fact, I just wanted to say that Family Promise was one of our first um, outreaches where um, I'm on the board of Village Gallery and as our, uh, we're a 57 year old 501c3 all volunteer run gallery next to the Cedar Mill Library. Um, and we decided that we were going to do an art kit um, project. And it came about when I was talking to the president of a gallery in Forest Grove and it took off like a rocket. Um, the mayor wrote something in your city about it and um, we got a thousand dollar grant from the city of Beaverton um, arts program and we also um, got a mention in the Sentinel uh, which is the Elsie Stewart newsletter um, unfortunately it was for an event that was on September 11th and because of the um, hazardous uh, air quality we had to cancel it so um, but Family Promise was the first um, outreach where what we have are um, about seven to 10 different kits, doodle kits, Zentangle kits, um, 
just different art kits that are very, very simple and they're for kids and, and adults alike. So um, we went to Family Promise and um, we met with Jolene and actually Jolene's sister and my son went to school together. Um, anyway, so we dropped off some kits there and we dropped off some at Bridge Meadows where we actually did some of the, uh, the different things with the kids there on site. I took some photos and they're in our um, newsletter on our website at Village Gallery of Arts um, if you wanted to go and look at that. Um, we also got a call from or a message from somebody who had responded to Denny Doyle's message in the your city and wanted a kit for her daughter so I met her at the gallery and, and let her choose the gift the and this was her a 13 year old um, <clears throat> so we have in the course of a month given out 76 kits uh, to a variety of people and we're also going to do it at the Aloha pantry food pantry um, I talked to the person who is at St. Mary's uh, Home for Boys. We're going to do some there. Um, we're going to do some at uh, Home Plate later um, in this year or early next year. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're, we're up and rolling. But the, the mm -hmm. thing I want to ask all of you is, number one, if you have a simple art kit or project, that you would like to share with us, please let me know. Number two, if you've got a, a really, um, the, I've mentioned some of the, the audiences that we have targeted, if you've got somebody that would tar would um, do well with this, oh, in fact, THPRD, I'm working with Ann Satterfield for the Recmobile and uh, passing out some of those kits to the low income, uh, kids in low income housing. So if you have an audience that you would like to see benefit from this, let me know that as well. Um, so that's, that's it in a nutshell. Great. Thanks. Thank you so much, Sharon. Any questions for Sharon? Anybody? All right. Nonprofit roundup. I actually was supposed to share a segment in this too. Sharon just reminded me. <laughs> um, sounds like we're all kind of in the same genre of supporting people with whether it be kits or um, getting involved with helping people, you know, stay in some form of housing through a critical season of their lives. Um, uh, I, with the Neighbor Southwest, um, we're working with um, Department of Human uh, Services to um, provide uh, they're called flash boxes to kids in transition that are coming through DHS. Um, and uh, right now through COVID, we're, we're, we're gonna have to wait a little bit before we can act on this, but we have all the kind of organization in place to um, start hosting like flash kit kind of gatherings where we get together and we pack, bring the, bring the supplies, there's a whole like shopping list. It's kind of, um, you know, everything from like, um, you know, allergen kind of free snacks to um, new, gender neutral toys and just little like comforts for children in their, on their critical day of transition. And so, yeah, so that's one, one way, one thing we're looking forward to with uh, the neighbor Southwest is getting that, that going. Um, we're just going to be hosting these uh, flashbox nights and I just know that like, I, I have a friend who, uh, who went through the, the foster system or was, was removed from her home. And it was, uh, it was a similar box, similar organization um, that provided just some hospitality in that cold office room, <laughs> you know, that um, made the difference um, in, that, in her moment. And so, yeah, so that's, there's, there's more activities like that. You can reach out to me if you want via email, or whatever, if you want to uh, get involved with that. So yeah, um, good stuff. Thank you so much. Is it Winsby? On your, on your Zoom, it says W-L-N-S-V. That's five consonants in a row. Is that, is that how you spell your name? That is how I spell uh, my name. Is, uh, it's uh, all there to throw you off. Um, and it, it's pronounced Wednesday like Sunday. Oh, great. It's a beautiful name. 
Absolutely. Thanks Thank for you. joining us tonight. Sharon, you have a beautiful name too. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to uh, Knack Business. Um, Sharon, do you want to help me through this, this segment here? What, what's going on here? Possibly it just, uh, the agenda item is just Knack Business. The sub point is minutes and treasurer or treasurer report. And so typically what we do is make a motion to um, approve the minutes and get a second discussion and then vote. Um, so that would be one thing. The treasurer's report would be another. Um, that would be Scott. Would you mind running the minutes? I'd love to see how you do that because I'm still, I know I've been doing this for a while, but I still feel kind of new to this. Oh, okay. Well, um, for those who had the opportunity to read the minutes, um, I would like to ask for a motion for approval. Looks like Scott I think Scott's moving here. <laughs> I, I was making sure I was not muted before speaking. I, I so move to approve last month's minutes. And can we get a second? I'll, I'll second. <laughs> All right. Any discussion? Okay, um, so all those in favor, say aye or raise hand. All opposed, say nay. Any abstentions? Motion carries. Great. And then we can go Thanks on so much. Talk. Thanks for carrying that one, Sharon. <laughs> all right, Scott, I see you're our treasurer for yes. uh, Mountain. What's the report, brother? So the report remains the same. We, we should figure out something to do with our, our money, but we have 3,085 and 20 cents in our account. So that's unchanged from last month. All right. Thanks so much for that. I like financial reports that are nice and short personally. So that was definitely a plus for the evening. Um, okay. Nothing coming in, nothing going out makes it. All right. Um, all right. Sharon, Sharon or Francisca might want to help me with this, this uh, point here. I don't remember doing this with Neighbors Southwest, but board member, uh, roundtable, visitor comments, announcements. Can you take us through that, either Francisca or Sharon, how this segment runs? Well, we do have people that are not on the screen but are in attendance, but I don't see any chat from them. Um, and now's the opportunity for those who we can't see to be heard, in a sense. Um, and then also just a around, you know, in, in the past we've just shared, but I think we have such a, um, a low attendance tonight that we might not have this portion. Well, what, what I would suggest is, because uh, it can be, you know, slightly awkward to be participating in the meeting, but not be able to talk. And, you know, I'd love to hear from the folks in the, in the audience, so to speak, um, you know, to introduce themselves and, you know, say anything that they want about, you know, being in the Sexton Mountain neighborhood or the neighbor Southwest um, neighborhood. So I can just call on people and then unmute them and give them the opportunity to great. say hi to, to the board. That'd be great. All right. So Aaron, if you're, if you're listening, I have gone ahead and uh, granted you unmuted permission. So feel free. You've got the floor. Uh, thank you. Yes. Um, I've been in Beaverton. Well, let's see. I've been in Oregon all my life. Um, and I've been in Beaverton since 2006, I think. And so we live uh, in Sobe, which I have people always like, what's Sobe? I said, South Beaverton. They always think it's South Beach, but it's actually not. <laughs> um, kind of give a little humor. But anyway, uh, we live uh, off 158th at Brescia. Uh, drive. Um, I know it's kind of weird. 155th in Weir, basically. Um, so that's kind of where we are. So I'm just just want to kind of, you know, tap into the neighborhood resources that have been here so long. It's probably a good time to get connected. And so I appreciate you guys' time and volunteerism. And I know I will be um, a, a more regular member. Thank you. Aaron, I have a question for you. 
Um, is there anything that you would like to see as an agenda item or present a uh, presentation um, that would be of interest to you? Um, I don't have anything specific at this time. I'm, my daughter is, uh, our daughter is eight and she's an avid swim team member. And one of the crushing things this year has been just the, the closure of the pools and we can't have swim team this year. So that's always my, 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 my spin is love to see the, the pools get open. And, and so we're excited to hear that that might happen. So thank you. Great. Aaron, how did you find out about this meeting just out of curiosity? Um, I think it was in the, the news, the city newsletter, if I remember correctly. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you, Aaron, so much yeah. for being here. We really appreciate your participation. Um, so we're going to call on Carol now. Uh, Carol is listening. Uh, you've got the floor. Feel free to introduce yourself, say hi, share anything you'd like. She's muted. Hey, Carol, I think you'll need to unmute yourself. Or Francisca, can you do that? I can make the request to unmute, but um, it's still uh, operated by the person. Gotcha. Well, we can um, move on and come back to Carol. All right, Julie, Julia, if you are listening, uh, you've got the floor. Hello, can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my name is Julia Mbake. I have a second grader at Sexton Mountain Elementary, and I saw about this meeting. I've seen it several places, but mostly on the Sexton Mountain Elementary Facebook page. And it never had worked out before to go, but this is the first time that I was able to attend. I, um, I work full time and I am also a master's student. So the, the meetings always lined up with something that I had going on other times. But I would like to be more involved and come more often. Hopefully um, that's something that I can make regular. Thanks for coming out tonight. Glad this is working for you. It works great for, for myself and a lot of other people to just eliminate that commute. As, as short as it is, it makes a difference. Yeah, sure. it does. <laughs> yeah, we're really glad to have you, Julia. So thanks for, thanks for stopping in tonight. All right, well, uh, we'll go to Lisa now. Lisa, I have uh, granted you um, un unmuted permission to share if you'd like. Hi, Lisa. Lisa, you're unmuted, but we can't hear you, unfortunately. If you're able to put something in the chat, that would be great. Um, but we, we certainly would love to, to hear from you if you're, if you're around. All right, we can come back to you if you are able to get your microphone working. Just use the raise hand function and, and um, we'll call on you again. We're glad you're here. Oh, is Lisa the um, anonymous attendee that says, sorry, can't find unmuted button? Um, I, I'm not sure. It says anonymous attendee, but we can Lisa, try again here. If you go up to the right hand upper corner of the box that you're in, if you see that, Ooh. and there's the mute, and you can press on that and unmute. Well, you're unmuted. But I don't know if the... Microphone. Hmm. Um, I was your audio settings. Yeah, I was just notified that the um, 
the, the chat feature for the staff person who set up tonight's meeting had uh, not enabled it for attendees, unfortunately. So they're um, putting in comments in the Q&A, which is great. Thank you so much for letting me know that. Um, I will circle back with Miles about that. But, uh, but yes, please use the Q&A function to provide any comments or questions. Um, but Lisa, uh, if you are able to, to chat, we'd love to, to hear from you. Mm -hmm. um, the unmute button is just in the lower um, left-hand corner of the, of the full screen. But it does look like you're unmuted. Um, so I'm, not, I'm unfortunately not sure what the, what the issue is. These technology problems are so frustrating. Okay, well, um, we can try again. Let me, I think I can enable the chat. So I have enabled the chat. If you wanna put something in the chat, we'd love to have you um, just share a little bit about who you are um, and anything you wanna see from you know this meeting. Great, Lisa, I, I see you in the Q&A. Thanks so much for participating. All right, well, back to you, Elliot. All right, yeah. We uh, think we're at the end of the agenda. Unless there's any other questions or comments, we'll call it a night. Go head in a little early, I guess. Any other questions, comments? Uh, yeah, um, so uh, Lisa shared that she would like to see some more neighborhood building activities when possible. So just putting that out there to the board. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to those activities, <laughs> big time. Hopefully, when things you know we can get when we can get back together, you know, do some service projects and um, be a community again in the old-fashioned sense. Yeah. Maybe you can talk about some of the things that y'all have done in the past. Um, yeah. Had some really fun projects. Yeah, yeah. We we my first year we tried a ton of different stuff. Um, our most successful event was actually the event we had right before, um, let's see, it was right about before COVID uh, kind of shut everything down, but we were able to rent out a theater in the AMC theater and we, we showed uh, the Mr. Rogers movie with Tom Hanks. It was just like, a, it was a total hit. We, we were able to rent the whole thing out. It was a free, free for the neighborhood. It was just kind of an RSVP thing. And it, um, there's a lot of people that came out to it. It was a considered, you know, um, totally worth a totally worthwhile event. It got people talking. We were able to get information in people's hands, and um, you know, that's kind of always been one of the one of the tricks, you know, with with these, the neighborhood associations is how do you get word out? How do you help people see the faces behind, you know, what's going on in the neighborhood? And so that was totally that was our most what. Uh, our most well attended event that we, we would want to do again, I would say we did have we did do one event that was overly attended and we'll never do again, because <laughs> it was okay it was a helicopter we call it the helicopter egg drop for Easter this is two Easter's ago we dropped <laughs> 10,000 Easter eggs out of a helicopter onto uh, oh, what park was it Hinkleman Park, and we were expecting maximum 500 people but like 4000 people showed up and we had like two little police officers on police bikes trying to direct traffic and so that was I mean it's a historic moment um the broke records is the biggest neighborhood event ever <laughs> um but we're not doing that again it was just a little too much so but yeah we, we try we did uh two serve projects where we revitalized um a green space and uh there's another one I can't remember, I think it was in the holidays, like collecting groceries and stuff for families in need, but by far the, the theater event was the, that was the winner right there. Um, just getting the, the neighborhood together um, for, for a night of fun, you know? So, yeah, we're, I definitely wanna do that one again once, once things open back up for sure. But we're always open to new ideas. Yeah. Sharon. I just want to put in a plug for matching grants through the city. And so you have all sorts of great ideas that might come funneling in and you can always um, write it up as a, a request for matching funds goes to BCCI and gets decided upon there. 
Um, but it's a wonderful opportunity to help mm -hmm. whatever endeavor you've got. Absolutely. And Sexton Mountain has done uh, some cool stuff in the past. I know. Yeah, let's hear about it. Yeah. Yeah, talk about the fun run. Yeah, so up until this year, we had done five consecutive years uh, gathering at Sexton Mountain Elementary for a 5K. And it usually gets around 200 people out, um, participants and, and fans watching. Uh, and we go through the neighborhood. There's usually somebody out there providing treats for after. Last time we had Jamba Juice helping us out. The company that, that does the timing is a lot of fun. They set up music uh, through speakers. And I don't know. It's great because it's, it's not just the elementary kids, but it's primarily the elementary kids. And so I'm a runner, and it's just really cool watching them uh, get into and, and love the excitement of, of race day as, as the energy level builds as you count down to to the start time and so it's a lot of fun for the families to come out and do that so uh it's actually on my to-do list in the next week or two once school has settled down to to reserve the the date this year and it's always the first saturday in june so just fingers crossed that getting a couple hundred people together outdoors works by the summer next year yeah I might need to steal that idea for Neighbor Southwest too, man. Maybe do two consecutive weeks or something here, or months or something. That sounds like a great idea. I We have, I'll, I'd have to check with TH Parody. There's somewhere in the several hundred range that we're, that we're able to do with the area that we, that we book. So we can, we can do a little heavier cross advertising too. If, if you yeah. know, it started on the, on the first year of that. For sure. Well, it, it does sound like we have a runner in our group. Erin is quite stoked for EA for running. All right. And then Sharon, did you want to talk about the annual movie night event that obviously couldn't happen this year, but has been very successful every other oh. year? I almost was going to say, hey, Scott, take it away. Remember when we got rained on and the people were in their sleeping bags and all sorts of stuff? And we still got, what do we get, 150 people maybe? When About we, that. Yeah, we thought we'd get many more, but the rain was just relentless. And then, um, yeah, no, it's a lot of fun. You know, we had PHPRD there. Um, we had uh, just a number of, of people around the perimeter. Uh, we had, um, I think it was a friend of Jen's, daughter who was a musician who played and sang um, who was quite good um, we had uh, Denny Doyle Mayor Doyle came out and, and spoke and it was it's just a really overall fun activity um, we were just a little hampered with mother nature <laughs> the one rainy day in August <laughs> it would <Okay>. now. <laughs> yeah I was out there with the ACMA theater group the kids were selling pizza they were, oh, they were so excited. They had show tunes. They were singing. They were dancing. They were, you know, it's like pizza. Come on, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Great. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I think that pretty well wraps everything up unless there's mm -hmm. neighborhood concerns that folks in attendance wanted to bring forth. Um, the only other thing that I wanted to put a plug in for, and I'll put the link in the chat, um, in talking about the voters forum, the upcoming voters forum, uh, we really want questions. So if you have questions for the candidates, for the mayoral candidate, for the candidates, for the city council candidates, or the Washington County candidates, uh, there's a button online for you to submit your questions. Uh, we definitely want to include those in the event. So I'll put that uh, link in the chat so you can learn more about uh, the Beaverton Voters Forum um, and submit your questions at your leisure. Great, thank you. And if you're unable to make it on the 14th, TBC TV will be covering it. And Francisca, I'm not sure what their rebroadcast schedule is and if they post it, but you should be able to catch it. 
Yeah, I don't have the rebroadcasting schedule yet, but it will be posted on that website that I just put in the chat. So once we have that information, we will put the full table of when they can um, watch it on TVC TV. It'll also be um, on our YouTube. Um, so we'll um, put the video onto the actual page itself so folks can watch it at any point. Um, and uh, it will also be broadcast live over the uh, channel 28, which is the Spanish channel on TVC TV. So if there's anybody that you know um, that, uh, you know, Spanish is their first language and they would like to watch it that way, um, that will be available also. Great. Well, that said, I think we can call it a night. Sound good? I'm glad, glad to see everybody's faces again tonight. Um, thank you to our guests for introducing yourselves and participating tonight. Um, yeah, uh, what are the magic words? Adjourn, is that the, <laughs> we're running a meeting here. Uh, how do we do this, Sharon? Don't you get like a little hammer out and, or what do you call that? Gavel, a little yeah, gavel. Gavel. Are we adjourned? <laughs>